Greetings, everyone. This is Jeff Wilkerson, professor of physics at Luther College, bringing you the next in our series of what to look for in the night sky. We're looking at the week of October 21st, 2024. This time around, we've made it to fall here. We finally had some fall weather this week. It's crisp and nice and, and really looks, uh, feels beautiful, looks beautiful, feels beautiful. It feels like fall observing uh, when we're out looking at the night sky. Last week, uh, we left you with the, the bright comet that everyone's been talking about, uh, Trichinchin Atlas. And we left it near the star Marfik uh, in Ophiuchus. And what it's going to do in the week ahead is it's going to traverse Ophiuchus and get over near the bright star, Beta Ophiuchi. Uh, Sabalri uh, it is this star. It's a third magnitude star, 2.8 magnitude star, pretty bright. So watch it to move from Marfik to Sabalri up this direction as the as the week wears on. What's also should happen, uh, you know, comets are notoriously difficult to predict exactly what's going to happen, but what should happen is the comets should, should start to fade from sight a little bit. It should start to get a little bit fainter, but over this direction, it stays up a little bit later, and the moon is setting later, so you've got some things in your advantage as the week wears on, but the comet's going to get a little bit fainter. You might want to get binoculars to do this tracking as it moves across there. Uh, to, to, see, to see the head of the comet there uh, as, as the tail gets fainter and harder to see, perhaps. Um, perhaps not. I don't know. Um, but anyway, start early in the week. Definitely start right on the evening of the 21st. If you haven't already been doing this from last week in the 19th, 18th, 19th, 20th, uh, keep going right on the 21st and watch this uh, each night, every night that it's clear. Uh, it'll stay up a little bit later, a little bit later after dark, but you want to get out there right as soon as it's dark to check this out. Now, on the evening of the 21st, that's also the forecast peak of the Orionid meteor shower. And this meteor shower, it's a, it's a fine meteor shower. It has uh, probably, you know, every, every five minutes... Uh, maybe you'll see a, a, a meteor from this shower. And remember what happens with me. This is named this because the radiant is in the constellation Orion. And Orion's coming up just a little bit later, but Orion, uh, uh, you know, later at night here. Uh, but you don't have to look to Orion. You just need the, the meteors to trace back to the point where they originated in Orion. And you want to catch this early in the evening because the moon's going to rise and the moon's 70% full. Uh, that night, and so the moon's going to wash stuff out, and it's going to make it hard to see the fainter meteors. So the first three hours after dark is the time you want to be out observing these meteors, which is exactly the time, uh, the first part of that time, you want to be out uh, observing the comet. So this is all great. Now this, these meteors are, are, are the remnants, it's dust. So we're, we've talked about this uh, many times before. Uh, the comets get close to the sun, they boil material off, and when they boil material off, there's gas, and there's dust. And so often a comet will have a, a gas tail that's straight and blue and, and a dust tail that's curved and white that's reflecting sunlight. The blue tail is fluorescent. It's, it's, it's light uh, emission from the gas. And um, the, the white tail is reflected sunlight. And you'll see these two tails, but that's material that the, the sun heating is boiling off the nucleus of that comet. And, and you see it as the puffy head of the comet as well. And then, later, when we fly through that debris that has been boiled off the comet, we get a meteor shower, and all the meteors look like they're coming from the same point in the sky. And this, and, and, and we hit this, uh, and, and it's a big tunnel, right? And so we don't hit it all at once. Uh, so this is the evening of the peak, but this is actually a fairly long meteor shower. You'll see a few meteors. You've been seeing a few meteors if you've been looking, and you'll see a few meteors for a while in the future as this thing spreads out as we go through that dust cloud. This is from uh, Comet Halley. Uh, probably the most famous comet, well-known comet of, of all. And so that left this debris by that this debris that we're sweeping through right now this week. So we got we got a bright comet that we can see right now. Hopefully we're still able to see it this next week ahead pretty well. We've got Halley's Comet, uh, a famous comet uh, that helped us, you know, think about Newton's law of gravitation. And so Sir Edmund Halley was a, a friend of Sir Isaac Newton. And... Um, might dare say the only friend Newton had, uh, and so they 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 talked, they communicated, and worked together. And, and Halley was able to to use Newton's newly formed laws to calculate the orbit, uh, the orbital parameter, the orbital ephemeris, we'd say, of that comet, and to understand this was a comet that we'd seen before and we're going to see again. And so this is a really important comet in history that way. It's an important comet in my history. I saw it. I was a junior in college in 1986 uh, when I saw Halley. 
uh, come by. It was, you know, it wasn't a spectacular comet, but it was a very visible comet. It was good to be able to go out in dark skies and be able to see it and just to know that fun history of it. And also there were two comets. Seen everybody excited about this comet. Uh, the current comet that we have reminds me of two comets that were also important in my history. Uh, right before I moved here uh, to Luther College in Northeast Iowa, I moved from California in the United States. And there were two comets in two years in a row that were really bright right before them. The first was Hiakitaki, and Hiakitaki was just a spectacular comet. It had almost no dust tail and a spectacular, spectacular gas tail that just stretched all the way across the sky. Uh, and, and I observed that comet uh, several nights, uh, and one night in particular uh, at, at the Point Arena Rancheria, uh, with the residents there. It was just a fantastic night of observing that Comet Hiakitaki. And then a year later, uh, Comet Hale Bop came around and Comet Hale Bop, wait, there's a picture of Hale Bop right here. So you can see a picture of Hale Bop right there. And you can see the, the blue, maybe you can see that in this, in, in your video, the white uh, dust tail and the blue gas tail that came streaking off there. Comet Hale Bop was also big and bright and got to see some uh, see that on several nights, and in fact, when I flew across the country to my interview for this job, where I still am all these years later, almost 30 years later, uh, you, uh, I could see I was flying at night because there was a delay in the plane, and I, I could lean my head on the window uh, while everybody else slept, and I could watch Comet Hale Bop in the sky as we flew across the country from California uh, to the middle part of the country here. Anyway, I think about these things every time. I've seen a half a dozen pretty good comets in my lifetime. And, and so I, when, when there's comet fever like there is right now, I think about these things. And I think about these things when we fly through the debris of a comet, as we will with the Orion and meteor shower. Uh, other things to think about with the moon. So the moon it bothers us a little bit for these observations, but it's going to rise later and it's going to wane away as the week wears on. So we've got over here by the evening of the 22nd and the 23rd, the moon's about 60% full. And there's Castor and Pollux, the bright stars in Gemini, and Mars right below the beautiful red Mars. And there's the moon right with them. So get out on that evening if you can. If you miss it, if it's cloudy or you can't get out, the next night the moon will have moved over here. And it makes a pretty good uh, grouping as well. And the moon will be about 50% full that night on the evening of the 23rd and 24th. By the early a.m. of the 26th, by the time we get to the morning of the 26th, uh, the moon will be over here by the bright star in Regulus. Uh, the, brightest, the bright star Regulus is the brightest star in Leo, and the moon will be down to about 30% full, and it won't be hampering our observing of other things uh, by that point because it's getting to be pretty uh, pretty uh, waned away. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a pretty a nice crescent moon here above Regulus. Now, we think of Leo and Regulus as a springtime constellation, Leo, and a springtime star. And that's because we see it in the evening, in early spring, uh, we'll see it climbing into the evening sky. But here we are in fall, and we see it in the morning sky, a reminder to us that as the earth spins, we see different parts of the sky at different times of night. And so what we think of as an evening fall constellation, we're seeing in the morning sky right now. And we're seeing it pretty well. I'm seeing it every morning when I'm out walking around. But we can sw swing over to the evening sky and see typical fall evening. And of that, that you've got the great square of Pegasus. And the great square of Pegasus is the most definitive marker of the fall sky in my mind. And you've got a couple of 2.5 magnitude stars, pretty good bright stars. Shiat Markab, mark this uh, western side of the Great Square. And if you drop about that same distance on down, you have to swing a little bit right from on down. Saturn is there right now. And Saturn is a nice bright uh, yellowish object glowing below there. So you, should, you shouldn't have any problem to go from Shiat to Markab to uh, Saturn down this direction. But Saturn, if you get your binoculars or your small telescope out, Saturn has a faint companion right now, a seventh magnitude star that you can see that it's really close to. As the week, uh, as the week progresses ahead, Saturn moves from about one-sixth of a degree away from this star to a quarter of a degree away from this star as Saturn is in retrograde motion, moving toward the west against the background stars. We see that distance opening up as Saturn's drifting off that direction. So go look for that star. That's a, a fun companion of Saturn that we see in the sky right now. You drop another four degrees, a little, little about a half uh, fist width at arm's length, almost straight south from Saturn right now. And you've got a group of a few galaxies that are in there uh, that should be observing challenges for you. You've got a decent telescope. You've got your 8-inch telescope or your 10-inch telescope or your 16-inch your telescope or whatever it is you have. And you want to go out and you want to look for some galaxies 
Uh, you've got uh, NGC 7443 and 7444 are, are a nice tight little pair of galaxies. Uh, you would see those in the same eyepiece field of view. Pretty faint and pretty small, uh, but worth trying to dig out. And very close by, uh, half a degree, less than half a degree away. Uh, so also possibly, in the, if you have a wide enough... See, yeah, that's the problem. If you, have a wide, if you have a wide field of view, you're going to gather more light and you're going to be able to see these fainter objects, but they're going to be smaller. And so the smaller objects are going to look like stars to you if you're not careful. Um, but if you have a wide enough field of view eyepiece, you can probably get NGC 7450 in that same field of view. So we've got a, a group of galaxies that's worth If you want an observing challenge this week, you've enjoyed seeing the seventh magnitude star right next to Saturn, and you've got all this other stuff going on, uh, go out and see if you can see these galaxies just below Saturn in the constellation Aquarius we are right now. So that's what we got for the week ahead. Uh, you know, all the weeks are great, and this should be another great observing week. Lots of stuff happening, lots of things to look at. You know, we didn't even talk about Jupiter and, and you know, Mars. We talked about a little bit as the moon passed through there, but we got other things, Venus, uh, that we didn't talk about that are in the night sky, in the evening sky, in the morning sky right now. But as always, thanks for watching, everybody, and we hope you have a great week ahead.